Hi, I'm Matthew Mandel, and this is What's Up Westport. Did you know that some of the best oysters in the country come right from Long Island Sound off of Westport's coast? Today we're going out with Norm Bloom and the boys from Earth Place's Harbor Watch River Watch so we can see how the oyster business is done and the interrelationship with the environment and water quality. Come on, let's go out to Long Island Sound. <laughs> My father and his brother Hill had uh, Talmadge Brothers, which was Bloom Brothers, then became Talmadge Brothers. And after my father passed away, I went off on my own and started Norm Bloom and Son. But well, water quality is real important to, to us. Uh, just keeping these Norwalk Islands, it's the, the heart of the industry for, for Connecticut. Uh, you know, without the Norwalk Islands, you wouldn't have much of an industry. I think that's good. He works real hard at it, he gets kids involved, and he gets up where, where the problem is. The problem's up in these drains, these old sewer lines, the old water, you know, all that stuff. And that's where he gets after. I'll fight it in there instead of waiting until it gets up out here in the water. It's too late when it's out here. Yeah. We're working with Norman. We want to see Norman survive. We want to see this industry survive. And I think our efforts to date have cut down a lot of the sewage here. Had those leaks that we've determined had they not been corrected, this harbor would be pouring millions of gallons of sewage in here. They're very happy to have us, by the way. They've signed letters, getting grants for us, and doing things of that nature. In fact, we just got a grant from the Department of Agriculture for $38,000 to be doing just what we're doing. We're the only harbor that's taken that kind of action. Nobody else has a nice little group running around monitoring the drain. You get bacteria counts out here go up, the state shuts the beds down. And they'll keep them closed until they can get tests that prove that the water is cleared up. And uh, that gets Norman frustrated, it gets all of us frustrated. So there's an interrelationship between the health of the water and the oysters? Very much so. The reason being, oysters are bioaccumulators. They pump 300 gallons a day when they're really going. And when they do that, of course, they're throwing bacteria into their tissues, which then starts to concentrate. If you take that oyster and transplant them out to a better water, clean water, he'll purge that out in 30 days to be ready for the market again. What you don't know won't hurt you? Well, in this case, if we didn't know, about all the problems, we'd certainly find out it was hurting us. And Harbor Watch is the only group, the only organization in our area that's able to tell us what we don't know. I look at our aquaculture producers as farmers of the water. Farmers of the water. We work with farmers of the land, but now we work with farmers of the water. The boats, there are the tractors. They go out into the places and they work with, with, the, with the aquaculture. This area here is all, this is all Westport grounds right here. In Connecticut, the largest farms are underwater. And these farms, you have problems just like a regular terrestrial farmer. Uh, the terrestrial farmer has problems with insects and drought. Uh, the oystermen have problems with starfish and oyster drills and also with the uh, storms. Yeah. So it's farming the sea. To be able to sell two, three hundred bushel a day, and I need to keep thousands of bushels behind it coming. And that's where most of my boats are just farming, shifting, moving oysters to make it so the market boat can come out every day and get a load and bring to the dock. All right. The oysters get free each job. It's all manual work. You know what I mean? The more oysters you got, the more jobs it, it, it creates for, for handling of it. Uh, there's no machines. There's no anything to really handle the oysters. So it's all done by hand. It, it, it creates a lot of jobs. I probably got up to 50 employees. There's just no better argument for the need for clean water than this right here. How people cannot be conscious of the need to maintain the environment when uh, they're in essence putting it into their stomachs, I don't know. Without, without clean water, the, the benefit of having homegrown shellfish becomes closed and unavailable. So as Jim was mentioning earlier, this is the best case for protecting water quality. Well, that's it for What's Up Westport. I'm Matthew Mandel. I hope you learned something about the interrelationship between water quality, the oysters that we eat, and what's going on in Long Island Sound. We'll see you next time. Doesn't get any better than that.